in 1988, Kojima Hideo brought gamers something that would become one of the biggest cult games of all time. Heavily inspired by Blade Runner comes Snatcher. The very first release was for the NEC PC-8801 series of computers, and it came on a whopping 5 discs. Now don't forget that this game was released at a time when Western PC games were mostly still pumping out PC speaker audio with CGA graphics. Rather sad when the Japanese were listening to full stereo FM synth and looking at colourful screens. Just check this out. Snatcher on the PC-8801 was produced by Team Metal Slave, a game developer led by Naoki Matsui, the planner of the MSX version of Gradius 2. Sadly, this version was released with an unfinished story due to various circumstances. Later, the final chapter was complemented and completed for the second release on the MSX2. Snatcher takes place in 2042 at the fictional city of Neo Kobe. You take the role of a detective known as Gillian Seed. A detective not unlike that of Decker from Blade Runner. You must find unidentified androids known as Snatcher who are roaming Neo Kobe, killing innocent people. Being a man of the law, Gillian belongs to a special branch of the police known as the Justament Unaffected Naked Kind and Execute Ranger, or Junker for short. He also has a sidekick robot known as Metal Gear Mark II, who can assist Gillian during his investigations. The world of Neo Kobe is dark and mysterious, full of danger around every corner. It's also full of rememberable characters, which suck you right into the world. Gillian being one of the main, thanks to his womanizing ways and amnesia. Unlike later ports of Snatcher, the original PC-8801 series supports a variety of BGM options, such as the YM-2203 and the YM-2608 soundboard 2. The PC-8801 version also features a very long end sequence, which is nearly 20 minutes in length. The credits include the name of the designer of the seal that is shrinking the package and the editor used to enter the text. Now that's some detail. As to be expected, later versions of Snatcher do make the NEC PC-8801 version rather obsolete by adding an actual mouse pointer rather than selecting options with numbers and completing the story. However, as a historical footprint, NEC's PC-8801's version of Snatcher is very important. If this game never happened, would the Metal Gear series of games ever existed? The second system Snatcher came to was the MSX2. At first glance, you could mistake this for the PC-8801 series version, and that's fine as both do look very similar. The MSX2 version even uses the same number system to select game options, such as look, speak, listen, and so on. There is a reason for this. The MSX2 version was actually started first, with the NEC PC-8801 version being ported from it. However, the MSX2 version was actually released two months after the PC-8801 release. Just like the original PC-8801 version, the MSX2 version also makes use of extra sound hardware. In this case, the Konami SCC Plus cartridge, which came bundled with the three game discs. With this plugged into your MSX2, you'll be greeted with some very good audio. The game will not play without the SCC Plus cartridge being present. Sadly, playing Snatcher on the MSX2 isn't ideal because it runs directly from floppy disk, making it extremely slow. Everything you select takes an age to happen. It really does hinder the ability to get into the mood when every choice taking around 15 to 20 seconds to activate. It may not sound long, but it soon gets very annoying. It's such a shame too, because this version sounds and looks quite nice.
彼らは冬になると現れ人を殺害密かに本人とすり替わり社会に浸透していく人工の皮膚をまとい汗をかき血を流すことも Third up is the Peace Engine Super CD ROM 2 version. This is where Snatcher becomes the game that we know today. Although the horizontal resolution of the graphics was halved compared to the PC version, the color was retouched from 8 colors to 512 colors. Also, because this version was on CD ROM, Konami took major advantage of this with ample use of animation effects, CD soundtrack mixes with chip music, and full on voice cast. Although the BGM is based on the PC88 version, new tracks were added to scenes that previously had no BGM. Another major step up with the PC Engine version is the message display. No longer is it typed like the personal computer versions. Plus, you can now speed through it. This makes playing Snatcher much more enjoyable than the previous versions, even if they were good. Sadly, the PC Engine's CD ROM 2 release was kept in Japan. However, our next version did get an English release. Little John! Little John! Janjak Gibson, say you know, navigator this. ひどいことをしやがる。And here we have the Mega CD version, which came after the PC Engine version and is in fact a port of the PC Engine CD ROM game, but now in English. In fact, this is the only version of Snatcher to ever be officially released in English. It's a great version for English speakers to have too, as it may just be the best version. Now, while the Mega CD version may be a port, It does suffer in the color department compared to the PC Engine version. However, it also has many, and I mean many, plus points, starting with the extended introduction. This intro is only available on the Mega CD. This version also contains many V drawn art assets, improving upon the PC Engine version. The chip tune audio is also far higher in quality, making great use of the Mega CD's PCM sound hardware. As well as the Mega Drive's Yamaha FM synth hardware. For the first time, the shooting sections can be controlled with a light gun. In this game's case, Konami's The Justifier and Sega's light gun, Mensa, can be used. How was work? Everything okay?、Mm. Gillian, what is it? What's wrong? Jamie, I've become a junker. A junker? Gillian, but why? Jamie, you know why. It's the only way we can regain our lost memories. Snatcher is the only word that keeps coming back every time we try to remember our past. I have to face them to find out why. Yes, but I can sense that there is something terrible hidden in our past. And if we remember it, it will destroy us. Jamie! I'm going now. There are many subtle and some may think are changes in the Mega CD port too. Many were made to cater for the Western audience, while some are a mystery. All chronological settings have been lowered by five years. Catherine's age has been increased from 14 to 18 years of age, and her sleeveless jacket was changed to long sleeves. 
In consideration of the whaling problem, the food ate at the Outer Heaven restaurant changed from whale meat to buffalo meat. The official name of Junker has also been changed from the so-called Japanese English to a natively valid name. Overseas edition, Japanese undercover neurokinetic elimination rangers. Japanese version, judgment unaffected naked kind and execute ranger. The Joy Division store is now Plato's Cavern, due to the British rock band being called Joy Division. Compared to the PC Engine version, Act 3 has a shooting scene and some graphics and adventure parts have been added to increase the volume, and many other changes that may have not been fitting or of interest for a Western audience. Now considering how much this version of Snatcher has changed, it may come as a surprise that Kojima wasn't even involved in the project. It may also surprise you that even though the Mega CD port was developed in Japan, it was never released domestically. There is no Japanese version of Mega CD Snatcher, only the US and European release. turned up. Damn snatchers. There is no need for concern. I have stored all the information about the evidence and the area in my memory. We should return to Junker Headquarters. The second to last port was released on the PlayStation. This basically features the same content as the PC Engine version, apart from the ending which was based upon the Mega CD version. The game has been renewed to suit the next generation machine, such as the addition of a CG movie, redesigned graphics and production values. However, the original PC version and PC Engine version staff including the director Kojima, were not involved in this port. Since Kojima was not in charge of the production, we find points were made at the discretion of the porting team. This basically gave us a mix of the PC Engine version and the Mega CD version with a touch of BGM arrangement. What's even more funny is that this PlayStation and the following Saturn ports were handled by different teams. This may explain why the Saturn version is considered to be better of the two, especially when the PlayStation version has censored graphics and changes to the BGM. Shit. 
どいことをしやがる Parts of Snatcher appeared for the Sega Saturn on March 29th in 1996. As mentioned, this is basically the same as the PlayStation version, but isn't censored, unlike that port. The loading is also quicker on the Saturn and it has an all around higher audio quality. ギリアンシードさんをお連れしました。よく来てくれた。ギリアンシード君。私がジャンカー本部局長のベンソン・カニンガムだ。ギリアンシードです。第17特集隊。あんたがギリアンシードかね。どこかで会ったかな。いや、初めてだわ。そうか。気のせいか。なんだ。男の悲鳴です。ジャンに何か起こったのでしょうか。ギリア、気をつけてください。胴体反応が複数あります。スナッチャーあるいはインセクターが